You're listening to the QuickBook Reviews podcast. Brighten your day with a book. Hello, my fellow bookworms. This is Philippa from QuickBook Reviews, author interviews and book reviews. How are you all doing today? Are you okay? Well, here we are again for the short episode. And as I mentioned last week, we're now going to two authors instead of three a week, just so I'm not throwing too many different books at you each time. Mondays, you'll have the usual longer episode and Friday, the shorter one. So the two books we're looking at today are A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh and All of Us Are Broken by Fiona Cummins. So let's go and talk to Claire McIntosh first. Well, it is my huge pleasure to welcome back to the podcast Claire McIntosh to answer five questions in five minutes about A Game of Lies. Claire, welcome back. Thank you for having me again. (laughs) Are you ready for your five questions? Well, I think so. Yeah, hit me with them. <laughs> OK, first one. I think you can do this one. Can you summarise your book for us? A Game of Lies is a crime novel which takes place in a reality television show. Seven contestants are on the Welsh mountains thinking they're there for a kind of survival style show. But actually, when the cameras start rolling, they're informed that each of them have a secret that they would do anything to protect. And to stay in the game, they're going to have to keep that secret and expose someone else's. So the stakes are higher. One of the contestants goes missing. Then there's a murder and it all goes horribly wrong. (laughs) It's just brilliant. It's just the best premise. Uh, Super. Right. Your second question. Why should we read this book? Who would it appeal to? It would appeal to people who like the sort of Agatha Christie style impossible murder setup, but in a situation that's bang up to date. And I think it's fair to say that this is, as in our first discussion, it is a series, but it's not a series, but it's a series if you want it to be a series. Is that is that right, Claire? Yes. I'm, I sort of think of them as linked standalones in that we've got the same detectives, some of the same detectives, some new ones. We're in the same world, but not necessarily in the same part of that world because we're moving sort of around the border between England and Wales. Um, So certainly it will appeal to people who read The Last Party, which was the first book featuring DC Fionn Morgan, and want to know what happens next to her and perhaps to her and Leo. There we go. Right, your third question. What do you want us to feel while we're reading this book? My hope would be that at some point during this book, you feel as though this murder could not have been committed by anybody and that you have no idea now who could have done it because all your primary suspects have cast iron alibis. So I want you to feel that. I also want you to feel really entertained. I want you to laugh. I laughed a lot while I was writing it. It's really bad form to laugh at one's own jokes, but nevertheless I did. And so I hope that you have a really, really good time. Can't say more than that. Your fourth question. Can you tell us your favourite major and a favourite minor character in A Game of Lies? My favourite character has got to be Fionn. She is a... 30, early 30s Welsh speaking detective who works technically in Wales but often across the border into England. She doesn't suffer fools gladly. She doesn't really like people very much. Um, she's a, she is a very good detective but she's also very bad at following rules. <laughs> she breaks the, the law a little bit but for really good reasons and she's just fundamentally awkward and challenging to work with uh, and I, I don't know I can't really explain why I love her so much I just do so I really really love Fionn and I know from reviews that readers have loved her too which is great and will hopefully continue to love her a secondary character that I love is Dave and I don't know if I want to say too much about <laughs> Dave except that he has a a slight issue with with flatulence, which, you know, we we can't think too harshly about. He really, really loves Fionn, and Fionn has allowed him to accompany her to work on a few occasions. That's not gone down too well with the DI. And Dave plays a fundamental part in (laughs) 
the outcome of this book. And I think that Dave will become many people's favourite character. I understand that. Your final question. In the last interview we did, we were talking about what biscuit was powering the writing of this book. And it was a, a ginger nan, a gluten-free for you at, at this point. And so this question is about what drink was powering the writing of A Game of Lies. Tea, 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 tea and more tea. At some point during A Game of Lies, I was influenced on TikTok to buy one of those enormous water bottles that hold two litres of water. And they're, <laughs> and they're ridiculous because mine is so heavy now that I, you know, I can't really take it around anywhere because it, <laughs> it weighs a tonne. But I thought I'll, I'll sit it on my desk and I will sort of just drink my way through this two litres. Anyway, I used it for a week and now it's languishing in my office somewhere because really all I want when I'm writing is buckets and buckets of Yorkshire tea, a little bit of milk, no sugar except in the morning when I'll have what my husband calls a homeopathic amount of sugar, <laughs> which I can absolutely taste the difference if it's not there, but it is, it's less than an eighth of a spoon. So yeah, that's me, tea. Well, Perfect. Whatever it's powered by, it's working. So we'll we'll take the, the tea and bucket loads of it. It's just been lovely to talk to you again. Claire McIntosh, whose latest book is A Game of Lies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brilliant. So that was A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh. And now let's go talk to Fiona Cummins. Well, it is my huge pleasure to welcome back to the podcast Fiona Cummins, whose latest fabulous book is All of Us Are Broken. Fiona, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Well, these are your five questions in five minutes. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> oh, you should be. No, no, you really, you really, if this is what scares you, dear, oh dear, Fiona, you need to reevaluate your life choices. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. My writing doesn't scare me, but you do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I never scared anyone, except my children, I hope. But anyway, there we go. Don't get me started on that today. <laughs> Let's start. Can you summarise this brilliant book for us? Yes, so it's the second in the series featuring my troubled detective, Saul Anguish, and he becomes involved in a case. Features a woman called Christine Hardwick and her two children, Galen and Tom. And after a very difficult year, the family set off on a, a much longed for road trip to Scotland. But when they get there, they stumble across two extremely violent, young, damaged killers who are hell bent on infamy who force uh, Christine into making an impossible choice between the life of her 13-year-old daughter and her eight-year-old son. Mm, gosh, yes. What a choice, what a story, what a book. The next question is, why should we read this? Who would this book appeal to? I think it would appeal to, well, I hope it would appeal to kind of lovers of all kinds of fiction, really, because, yes, it's genre fiction, it's it's a crime thriller. Um, I wouldn't really describe my books as police procedurals, although they do have, you know, detectives and, and members of the police force within them. But there's always a strand relating to the family and there's always or mostly a strand relating to the killer killers too but anyone who enjoys fiction that makes them think I suppose and it's also a love story too I wouldn't go so far as to recommend it to romance readers probably because it's much darker than that and there are lots of dead bodies but I think if you enjoy reading you know fiction that transports you and makes you turn the pages then hopefully it might be for you yeah it's an emotional read was that what you were hoping for yeah it was and you know one of the one of my it's really you know even kind of six books in you still get really nervous when proofs are sent out to your peers and to reviewers and to you know bloggers and 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 lovers of crime fiction because you know readers are really discerning and you know they're not they know what they like and they're not backwards and saying if they don't enjoy something but one of the things that really struck me was that the writer David Baldacci who has sold millions upon millions of books he he came back with a wonderful quote, I suppose. And he said it had many layers of profound substance. And for me, that was just exactly what I wanted because, yes, it is a, a thriller, it is a page turner, but, you know, I was trying to get under the skin of the characters too. And so that was kind of felt really special to me. And I suppose my next question feeds in 
to that, which was what do you want us to feel as we're reading it? I'd like you to feel everything. I mean, when you write a book like this, you know, it's a fast moving story. And, you know, there is a a story between the detectives. You know, there are subplots with, with, within that element of the story. There are the feelings developing between Saul and, and Blue. But also, you know, there was lots of feelings of love between the family and also between sort of the damaged couple too. I want you to feel as if you're there, as if you're on the journey with all of those characters, you know, that you can taste the sweat of the killer, that you can, you know, along with, I don't know, the innocent young people who become caught up in this spree killing, you know, how it would feel to to be them, you know, how it would feel to be a young boy when someone, you know, breaks into your house. All of these kind of scenes that happen within the book, I... The biggest compliment um, that readers can can pay is if you manage to paint a picture with your words and people feel part of, of that experience. Which you certainly achieve for, for us as readers. Uh, the next question is, which was your favourite major and your favourite minor character in the book? I think my favourite major character writing this was probably Missy. <laughs> she is, she starts the day as a teacher at primary school and ends the day as a mass murderer. Well, not a mass murderer, but certainly a, a killer of, of many people. And I was exploring that idea of how something can just tip you over the edge. You know, I was thinking a lot about, you know, Michael Douglas and falling down when something just you know, something just happens and it's a catalyst for, you know, your life spiralling out of control. Mm. And my favourite minor character is there's a little boy in the book, just alluded to him briefly, and he is at home unwell when they break into the house of his family. And the killers, when the killers break into the house of his family and and, and something happens to him and, and writing that scene... Um, gave me goosebumps and I know when my agent read it she was just like this scene is unbelievably tense and and so you'll see I hope um, when, when you read it what I'm talking about. Are you able to shake off the things that you're writing when you go back into like family mode when you finish being an author for the day? I think so because you know I do a lot of research and actually part of the research for this I was looking at photographs of Bonnie and Clyde when they were gunned down by the police they went down in a hail of bullets and, and you can find post-mortem photographs on online and but I am able to detach myself from those things, you know, screens, they they provide a distance. And unfortunately, I think, you know, lots of us are desensitised to an extent to violence because of the culture that we live in, because, you know, you can find anything, you can see anything online, you know, and now we're, we're we all have access to those kind of things if that's what you're looking for but I do I never treat that lightly at all I, I think people should be victim survivors should be treated always with the respect that they they deserve and I you know it's handy having this shed because I can come in here and I can write and then I shut the door and I go back to you know being mum and cooking dinner and you know helping with homework or whatever that sort of family life it, it it's a palate cleanser I think a lot of my writing is dealing with my own fears actually because for me the worst thing would be something happening to my children like that is I can't imagine anything worse and and time and again if you read my books I play that scenario out you know something happens to a child or something awful is happening and I think that's I use my writing to to process that fear all the time even subconsciously well it seems wrong to move to a very flippant question but <laughs> is it about biscuits <gasps> well funny you should say that it's not about biscuits because we talked about biscuits in the last interview but it's about drink what drink was powering the writing of all of us are broken oh tea gallons and gallons and gallons of tea i love tea i drink a lot of it but sometimes i mean 
when I was coming to the end of writing All of Us Are Broken, it was a very, very sort of hot summer. And so I love ice cold water with lime in it, fizzy water. And sometimes I might have a vodka or a cold beer. <laughs> Sounds very good indeed. Well, if it all helped create All of Us Are Broken, then then we're all for it. So Fiona Cummins, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Super. Thanks, Fiona. Let's just have a quick recap on those two books in case you've got your pen and paper ready. So it's A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh and All of Us Are Broken by Fiona Cummins. Two excellent books. That's it. That's it for today. I'm sending you out. I hope you're all right. I hope you have something nice planned this weekend. I'll be back on Monday with the usual waffle and you just look after yourselves. And I'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Quick Book Reviews podcast. That's enough books, said no one, ever. See you again soon. <laughs>